Hello everyone, Killer Shrew Fan here, and welcome back to my efforts to stay sane during quarantine. Today I really wanted to blow off some steam, cause I'm getting tired of it. So we'll be looking at a pretty much universally maligned figure. It's this, the Papo Amargosaurus. Every year it seems that Papo produces a figure that sparks a lot of controversy, and usually that's due to some bizarre artistic decision regarding accuracy, pose, or both. However, in this Amargosaurus, this represents something different for the company. Yes, it was the figure of that year's lineup that received a lot of criticism, but it was for a different reason. Simply put, this is not Papo. If any other company made a dinosaur model like this, it probably wouldn't have been as disliked as it was. But the fact that it came from a company who has made a name for themselves based on their incredible detail work and paint apps, it, it just made the situation all the worse. But now that a few years have passed and we've all had a chance to simmer down, is there anything redeeming about this model? We're going to find out right here and right now on Killer Shrew Fans Killer Toy Reviews. Let's do this! Taking a look at the head of this model, the shape at least feels right, and it's nice to see that the nostrils are properly placed. I know that feels like something that shouldn't have to be praised, but this is an objective improvement over their 2015 Apatosaurus model, so yeah, that's something that needs to be noted. I also prefer sauropod dinosaurs to be sculpted with open mouths so we can get a good look at their peg-like teeth, and that's done here. Unfortunately, in the case of this Amargosaurus, it gives the model a very derpy look, which is exacerbated by the bulging yellow eyes that have been framed with dark rings, and that lone neural spine sitting squarely at the back of the skull. Whereas that is the only instance of the raised vertebrae not being conjoined via sails, to my knowledge, this should be sitting a little further back on the neck rather than popping out of the back of the head like an antenna. All of that just combines to give this thing a very goofy, Look, this thing looks more like a sea monster than a dinosaur based on the head and neck. And of course, we have to talk about the Amargosaurus's claim to fame, those neck spines. First off, they feel incredibly short, which undermines the coolest feature of this dinosaur. And it is a bizarre decision coming from Papo, who is known for taking things to the extreme. And second of all, you can see they are fully sailed. Now, there's still some debate going on involving what degree of skin covering that existed on these spines, if any at all, but it seems pretty widely accepted that if they did support skin, they were not fully sailed as seen here. So even when it comes to nailing the look of this species' most intriguing feature, this model is still a lemon. Going down the length of the body, you can see that things don't get much better. The detail is incredibly rudimentary, showing little to no sign of the papo flair we have come to know and love. The best we get are the wrinkles around the limbs, but everything else is just rough, undefined textures. There are glimpses of hope in this model, signs of Papo's usual work just peeking through, but it's not enough to carry the damn thing. The underbelly has a bit more in terms of sculptural detail. There's some nice sagging skin down here, but it's glazed over with this horrendously thin white paint that looks more like frosting rather than skin color. And if it di if I didn't see the Papo logo on that belly, I wouldn't believe that this was coming from Papo. Like if I if I didn't see they announced it and I just saw this thing on the shelf and I picked it up, who made this? Oh, Papo? No way! <laughs> Oh my gosh. The front feet are at least commendable. They have the proper shape and the one thumb claw, which is nice. Then that goes out the window on the back feet, but whatever, I guess. Even the musculature on this model feels very carved in, which is just unfortunate. To the model's credit, I like how they address the back and they got they got that dicreosaurid shape that suggests the meeting of the vertebra, which is nice to see and the proportions are also well handled with the shorter neck and nice long tail. The pose is also blessedly simple on this thing, with the animal taking a simple stride forward, neck slightly turned and tail curving back behind it. That's about all the good I can say for this model. 
The paint scheme is horrendous. Don't get me wrong, I like the color choice. I think it's a very bold decision to give this dinosaur a mustard coloration with red markings. That's all fine and dandy, but the application is so bad. It looks like this thing was molded in black plastic or, or based out in black before other colors were applied. And as a result, all the finer detail, if you can even call it that, looks so garish and unappealing. Like, Midnight Black should never be used as a base coat, a wash, or dry brush, because it's just such an unnatural shade of color on organic life forms. No organism has a pitch black coloration to it. There are different colors that come together to form what our brains perceive as black. This feels like a very hand-painted model, and not a professional artist paint shop, mind you, like a well-done child's paint on one of those paint-your-own dinosaur kits you can get at a hobby store. In that regard, I would say this model is a raging success, but... <laughs> the size of this model is also underwhelming, measuring in at 9.5 inches long, or 24 centimeters, and only 3 inches high, or just under 8 centimeters off the ground. An Amargosaurus wasn't a big sauropod by any means, but... If your model is so unimpressive to begin with, the least you can do is make it bigger so it at least has some sort of shelf presence and chance to stand out. For comparison, here it is next to the Safari Limited Amargosaurus, and this is one of the few examples where Safari puts Papo to shame when it comes to detail and paint. The size is also so much more impressive, I think if you put these two side by side, you wouldn't even notice Papo's offering. Next here it is next to the Carnegie Amarga, who is showcasing some partially covered neck spines. And although this one is smaller, it still manages to look better than Papo's offering. I don't even know how old this figure is, but it's head and shoulders above this fairly recent Papo dinosaur. For other comparisons, here it is next to, here's the Papo Amargosaurus next to some other Argentinosauruses. First up is the Papo Carno, who looks poised and ready to take down this little Amargosaurus. But yeah, for a Papo comparison, it's no contest. The detail looks so much more refined on the Carno, and the paint scheme didn't fall back on dark colors to try and get the details to pop. I mean, the detail is still very readable from a distance without those stupid dark washes. I cannot fathom why it was suddenly necessary on this Amarga. Maybe it's because they realized the details weren't popping because they weren't as crisp. They're like, well, we got to make it look like this thing has nice sculptural details. Let's just, let's just throw a wash on it and make everything pop. Yeah, yeah no, it's a band-aid fix that doesn't even fix anything. And finally, for size comparison, the Papo Amargosaurus is in trouble because here comes the Vitae Giganotosaurus doing what should have been done from the get-go and putting this miserable thing out of its aforementioned misery and looking just absolutely awesome while doing it, I must say. So in conclusion, guys, yes, I was a bit scathing during this review, and really that stems from me being disappointed. Amargosaurus is easily my favorite sauropod dinosaur, and Papo is one of my favorite dinosaur companies. They have made some incredible sauropods in the past, and I wish they had pulled out all the stops to do so now. Instead, we got something that looks like it was designed by the intern, rather than their regular team of artists. I guess it's all relative, like if this Amarga came from someone else, say, Schleich, for example, I'm sure people wouldn't have hated it as much, but the fact that it bears the Papo logo means it had some big shoes to fill, and sadly came up short. For that reason, I think this Amargosaurus is one dinosaur that is better left extinct. As always, I want to know what you guys think of this dinosaur. Do you own it? Were you planning to pick it up? What is your favorite Amargosaurus in toy form? Leave all of your thoughts in the comments section below. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to maintain at least six feet of space between yourself and others, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye